Maybe. Written by Kobe Yamada and Gabriella Barushk. Have you ever wondered why you are here? You are the only you there ever has been or ever will be. You have so much to offer. Maybe you will invent something that no one has ever seen before. Maybe you will build things that reach high into the sky. Your life is yours. Try as many things as you can try. See as much as you can see. Wherever you go, take your hopes, pack your dreams, and never forget, it is on journeys that discoveries are made. Maybe you will help others to see the beauty in each day. Or maybe you will lift cheering crowds onto their feet. Do everything with love. Follow your heart and see where it leads you. Maybe you are here to shine a light into places that have been dark for far too long. Maybe you will speak up for those who can't speak for themselves. Maybe you are here to help in ways only you can. There will be struggles, there will be fears, and it won't always be easy. At times it will feel really hard. You might make a mess of things. You may fall down. You may fail. But you will soon get back up and you will rise a little stronger and a little taller because there really is more inside you than you know. And this world needs your gifts, your talents, your big ideas. And maybe you are just getting started. What if you are only scratching the surface of what you can do and who you can become? What if you have talents you haven't discovered yet? There is something powerful, even magical about you. You already have everything it takes to do big things. Maybe you have no idea just how good you really can be. And maybe you don't know how much you matter, but maybe just maybe, the world has been waiting centuries for someone exactly like you. One thing is for sure, you are here, and because you are here, anything is possible. Hi friends. For this lesson, here are the things that you'll need. A sheet pulled from your watercolor paint pad, your watercolors and a brush. You'll need your crayons and a white crayon. And you'll need a container of water. The dandelion is a common plant that grows all over the world. Some think of it as a weed, others as an edible plant. The blossom is soft and downy in the middle with several layers of petals. When the blossom dries up, it leaves a puff full of seeds that blow away and replant themselves. Have you ever found a dandelion puff, made a wish, and blown away the seeds? Okay, let's get started drawing our bright yellow dandelions. You'll need yellow, green, and brown. To start by just adding a little dot in the middle of the dandelion. I think I'll do one there. I think I'll do one over here and maybe we'll do one right here. So we start with our yellow. Remember the dandelions have several layers of um, petals. So we'll start with the inside right next to the middle and it's okay to just go right over that brown dot and I'm just going to go back and forth in a circle all the way around that little brown dot. Gives me a starting point. That's the center, the fluffy little center of the dandelion. And then we'll do this outside layer of petals. We'll do that all the way around. I'm kind of making a loop and filling it in. No rush, take your time all the way around. 
Dandelions are edible. Some people add them to their salads. Make sure you talk to a grown up before you do something like that. The blossoms themselves are edible as well as the leaves and the roots. People use the roots for different things and the leaves go in a salad. Blossoms can go in a salad, but don't do that unless you check with a grown up. And there's the outside leaves around the edges. If you really want your dandelion to be bright, you can actually go over it again with your crayon. I'm pushing pretty hard because I want it to be really bright. All right, one more. The stems are actually hollow. We'll just add a leaf. I think we're gonna, this, this, these, this plant is gonna have three dandelion blossoms. So I'm just gonna make them all come down to the same place. Now let's look at the dandelion leaf. It's actually, this is a small one. It's actually very bumpy and wavy along the edges. That's from a small dandelion. We're gonna make ours a little bit bigger. So let's add, and the leaves actually stay very close to the ground. So we're gonna start at the bottom and we're just gonna make our crayon go back and forth to make those wavy lines. And then when you think your leaf is tall enough, make a big loop there and then come back down to the bottom. And then you can add a vein down the middle. If you wanna color it in, that's great, but you don't have to because we are going to watercolor over the top. And if you use green paint, you'll already have a green leaf. All right, that's one leaf. Let's do one over here. Start at the bottom, go back and forth and back and forth back and forth, there's the bottom back there, and then we'll go right back there. There's the leaf. I'm not gonna color that one in, I'm gonna see what happens. And then I think I'll do one more big leaf right down here, <clears throat> back and forth. That one's laying right on the, the grass. That's usually what happens in my yard. And we'll put a line between that. Maybe we'll color that one in a little bit. <clears throat> Let's outline some of these green lines to give your artwork a little bit of what we call depth. It makes them look like there's might even be a little bit of light shadow. I'm gonna go down this vein like this. And you can even go around the outside of your leaves if you'd like to. The seeds will land and replant themselves and become new dandelions eventually. Maybe you've even held a dandelion puff in your hand and blown those seeds across the yard. When you draw dandelion puffs, they really are just straight lines as if you're making a star and you can do as many of those as you want. Remember, they can be pretty thick and then on the end of them, there's just that little thing that looks like this. This is what carries the seed. And there's a little seed in there. Also, there's a seed here. You don't have to do this on all the ends, but it makes it look like it's a seed. And they also look like little umbrellas as if you're sending out little umbrellas. You might see these little, umbrella-like shapes flying through the air, looking for a place to land. So we'll add those too. Okay, we have our dandelions finished. Let's go ahead and start with our dandelion puffs. So I'm gonna start up here with the same little brown dot to give me a guide for where to start. I think I'll do two 
dandelion puffs. I'll do one here, maybe one here. And this is where the white crayon comes in. It may be hard to see on your white paper. Make sure that you push hard. And remember we used straight lines as if we were making one of those easy stars right through that brown dot to give us a guide. Let's add a few more here. Then let's add one here. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger, make those lines a little bit longer. And then I'm gonna add the little U-shaped lines to show where the seeds are. Those are the pieces that fall off, blow away, settle in somewhere new to plant new dandelions. Some people don't want dandelions in their yard. Some people do because they use them for salads. Do that here. And then remember, we'll add some that are flying away in the sky as if they've been disconnected from the puffs. So we'll put some up here. We'll do a little line and a little U-shaped. Then those little lines that give you, I'm sure this is hard to see. Get a few of those. Remember, we're gonna watercolor over the top and <clears throat> they'll show up then. So let's give them a stem because when you find a dandelion puff and you make a wish, you know it's on a stem. This stem's gonna run right into that leaf and then jump over, come down here, run right into that leaf. And then this one will come right down here. Oops, bump right into that dandelion blossom, come right down here. And they might have a leaf and they might not. I'm gonna go ahead and trace those again with my brown crayon. All right, I think we're ready for some watercolor. You'll need your paint box. You'll need a paper towel, just in case. And you'll need your water clean water and your brush. We're gonna wake up the color that you choose to paint over the top. Now I've done a couple of these. My first one, I painted green over the top. And that's why these leaves didn't need to be painted because they were green. I did a yellow one to show sunshine in the background. I think this time I'm gonna do blue to show a sunny or a, a sky background. So I need to wake up that blue. Remember, your paint box has been drying and I'm gonna wake that up and we're just gonna paint right over the top of our picture, right over the top of the crayon that we drew. And what happens is the crayon is made of wax and so the crayon resists the water the water can't get through the crayon, so it goes right over the top of it. It's a beautiful effect. This is actually a watercolor technique called crayon resist. There are lots of different um, supply tools that you can use. Pastel is another one. You could do the same project with your pastels, and the water will not there uh, go over the top of your pastels. But, look a little bit different than crayon. They're made of chalk, but also much more water resistant. Oh, there's my little. Dandelion puffs flying away. So the goal is that you cover your whole paper with watercolor. It doesn't even have to be very thick until you've got a beautiful picture with a gorgeous background. Remember, you can use yellow or green or even maybe um, a light red to show that would be pretty, wouldn't it? A light red. I might have to try that next time. You 
can experiment. You can do a few of these. You can use different kinds of flowers as well. Now, if there's um, a leaf that you did not color in, you can always wake up your green and you can go right over the top of it to paint it in if you'd like to.